Hi everybody, let's talk about the Beer-Lambert law today. We saw in lab that if we graph negative long of the transmittance versus the concentration, we were able to get a straight line. And so if we take this and we write um, the equation of that line in terms of the x and y value, we know that negative log of the transmittance is equal to the slope times the concentration. And our y-intercept here is zero, which makes sense, because if there's zero concentration, then all the light should be passing through, and negative log of 100% is going to end up being zero. So what does this mean, and how does this relate to what ultimately is called the Beer-Lambert law? Well, negative log of t is given a special name, and that's called the absorbance. And the absorbance has a symbol A, and it's a unitless value. Since transmittance was unitless because it was the ratio of light going in to light going out, negative log of a unitless number is going to be unitless as well. So we have absorbance. And this is equal to the slope times the concentration. Well, that slope has some pieces to it. That slope reflects both how much the light interacts with the molecule and the thickness through of the liquid through which it's traveling or through of the material through which it's traveling. So let's take a quick uh, closer look at the idea of a thickness of a material. If we have a relatively narrow or thin material that we're going to have our light travel through, and there's some molecules in here that are going to be interacting with it, then some of this light is going to be absorbed. But if we have the same concentration, but say twice the thickness, that gets us twice the particles, and so more of the light is going to be absorbed. And so we call this thickness of material the path length. And Beer's Law takes all three, all four of these pieces, I guess, the absorbance, the ability of light to interact with whatever is doing the absorbing, and the thickness of that material along with concentration to write a single equation. This equation is known as the Beer-Lambert law and is A equals A, B, C. Or you'll also see it written as A equals A to B, C. So the only difference between these two is what symbol we're going to use to represent that interaction with the light. A again is our absorbance. C is the concentration. B is the path length. And then A, which is what is on the AP uh, equations, is known as the molar absorptivity coefficient. And this equation is so useful because I have a direct linear relationship between the concentration and how much light is being absorbed because both the molar absorptivity coefficient and the path length are going to be constant during a particular experiment. The molar absorptivity coefficient depends upon the wavelength and depends on what the molecule is. The path length for most standard spectrometers is going to be um, one centimeter. And so for our purposes, unless I tell you otherwise, you can just assume that that path length is one. And this Beer-Lambert law equation, typically called the Beer's law equation, is going to allow us a nice way to determine the concentration of a solution. We can just measure its absorbance. Okay, let's talk a little more about that molar absorptivity coefficient. So the molar absorptivity coefficient depends on what the material is, and it depends on the wavelength you're looking at, because different wavelengths of light will interact differently with a given molecule. So you've got two ways to calculate it, a good and a better. So you can certainly calculate it from a single absorbance measurement as long as you know the concentration. If you measure the absorbance, you measure the concentration, and you know that your path length is one, you can readily solve for the missing value for the molar absorptivity coefficient. An even better way to calculate the molar absorptivity coefficient is to create a Beer's Law plot, which is what we did in lab. And in a Beer's Law plot, you're graphing absorbance versus concentration, and you're gonna measure that concentration, or excuse me, measure the absorbance for four or five or six or more different concentrations of the solution. That allows you to find a line of best fit and the slope of that line of best fit is your molar absorptivity coefficient. That is a huge advantage um, in terms of measurements because now you're not relying on a single measurement to determine molar absorptivity. What if that one wasn't quite right? What if your concentration wasn't what you thought it was? 
What if your, um, your light bulb was wavering? This allows you to do better than a straight average, but to, to look at the impact of multiple measurements uh, to determine that molar absorptivity coefficient. And if you do have one outlier, it's not gonna impact the, the ultimate results as much as if it was a straight average. Quick comment about the units on the molar absorptivity coefficient. So Beer's law is A equals ABC. Uh, absorbance is unitless. C is our concentration, that is molarity. B is our path length, that's gonna be in centimeters. We've said this a couple times already this year. What's on the left side and the right side, the units have to match because they're equal. So the units on the molar absorptivity coefficient are whatever it takes to make these units match. Well, molarity is moles over liters. And so I have a liters in the denominator that I want to go away. So for the molar absorptivity coefficient, I'm gonna put liters in the numerator. In the other two numbers, the path length and the molarity, I've got moles and centimeters that are in the numerator. I want those to go away, so I'll put those in the denominator. And so the units for the molar absorptivity coefficient are typically written as liters over mole times centimeters. You'll also see this written as liters times inverse moles times inverse centimeters, which is just a different way of writing that, but is mathematically equivalent. So if you wanna determine the concentration of a solution, you just need to know the molar absorptivity coefficient. Then you need to measure your absorbance, and from there you can plug those values into the Beer-Lambert law and solve for concentration. And remember, that path length, unless you're told otherwise, is one centimeter, so we already know that. So plug in your absorbance measurement, plug in the molar absorptivity that's been determined at this particular wavelength for the molecule you're investigating, calculate concentration.